Hey, what up? It's your boy Dyke and Dan here, back with another Epic 7 video for you all. Super Creator decided to release the dev notes for this month, and they got a lot to talk about. Uh, a lot to do with the, uh, the Q&A session that we were talking about last time from the Fiesta, and a little bit more um, from some questions that other people were having and other concerns that they haven't discussed at already. So let's go and take a look and see what they got in store for us. So first off, they're saying, We here at Epic 7 feels like most, the most entertaining aspect of Epic in order to improve this aspect of Epic 7, we have to gradually increase to areas that have impended hero growth, such as supply, demand of equipment, as well as necess necessary for enhancing hero skills. With the updates that will occur in June, we are improving the supply of accessories. After the updates in June, we plan to monitor how things change after, I mean, affect the community. Additionally, we plan to continually improve Epic 7 Festa with Epic 7 Festa. Cool. So the first thing they're talking about, guys, is the Mola and Goro improvements. And yes, they are doing another improvement to the Mola Goros because, once again, they are still quite expensive for your characters. You do need quite a lot for one character. So they're going to be reducing that again. So let's go ahead and get them to this. It says, in the previous update on March 28th, the second improvement of the Mola Goro system was implemented however it is because of the skill that some players wish to enhance their various heroes which are still too costly we're preparing a third round of Mulligora systems currently we're planning on reducing the Mulligora cost to 12 to 18 percent lower than the current standard and we're preparing to implement these changes in july so this is going to be coming in july update after the Mulligora system is improved players rece uh, will receive any excess Mulligora spent via their in-game mailbox in addition to these changes we will also create new content which reward players with Mulligoras too yeah they were talking about that for example we have added the adventure path mission which rewards players with molas yep required for early hero progression and starting on july the new content automation tower okay so they're actually giving us a date so starting on july 1st is when we're getting the automation tower so that is confirmation right there so july 1st we can expect the automation tower to be here um we'll offer other molos as rewards however please know that we are not considering a skill recall function okay we're planning new content so different heroes can be used in a variety of content such as world balls which include in the future additionally we continue to balance heroes so that Every hero can be used effectively. So they are hearing our concerns about how the molas are being used and how expensive they are. And I'm pretty sure they see that, hey, this is probably our most, like, bought pack because it's so hard to get them. And, you know, they are very um, rare. Well, not rare, but it's very limited in the amount that you can get per month. So we're going to be getting new ways to get them. Like they mentioned the invention for... The adventure path for newer players so they could get some as well as the automation tower is going to be a new way so reducing the cost again um no recall for skills though so no recall for the skills but excess will be given and yeah i think that's just a good um implementation overall i don't know if they're going to keep reducing them i think this may be like the last reduction for a while i think this is good i think once we get this and they implement more ways for us to get mola, because this is both ways they could balance it, right? They can either reduce the cost or they could give us more ways to get them so they're not as limited as they are. So they're doing a bit of both. So I think this is a very good balancing in this way, um, especially if the uh, automation tower can give us. We got to see how many of it give us. But just the fact that it's going to be able to give us some period, I think is a good thing overall. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. The meat of this, the balance changes. I know a lot of people have been talking about the balance who they want to see nerfed who they want to see buff let's go ahead and see what they got in store for us um it says recently we have received many questions regarding the balancing of new moonlight heroes and we consider these questions to be very important moonlight heroes have been designed specifically for pvp content pve in-game content that allows players to compete with each other so they are commonly used for pvp content later on we plan on revamping quests and introducing new and more challenging PvE content such as World Balls. In addition to these changes, we will also monitor the usage of newly released heroes and balancing old heroes so that their rate of selection is not drastically different when compared to newly released heroes. Additionally, we also plan on creating new metas and strategies with the release of new heroes. At the Epic Festa, we announced on June 27th, 
we will go into finer details on these changes in a separate notice. First though, we would like to explain the main intentions of the balance within this notice. So basically what they're saying here guys is when they make these P um, these Moonlight Heroes, they have PvP in mind. That's why when you see like the tier list or you um, see people opinions on them, a lot of people look at the kit of a Moonlight Hero and it automatically just screams PvP. You know, a lot of these Moonlight Heroes are really good for PvP, but they're not really, they don't really excel any like PvE content. You could use some of them, like some of them are pretty good, uh, you know, like a uh, cartridge and whatnot, you know, a few of them here and there. Maybe Armin in certain situations on some floors of Abyss. But for the most part, most of them are used specifically for PvP because that's just how their kits are. And they're trying to, what they're trying to do with the balance of the game now is they're trying to basically make counters to like the stronger characters. So rather than, rather than nerfing um, characters, they rather just make counters it seems like. Like they want to obviously like tone down like some really crazy stuff. But also they just want to make counters so they can have a variety in play. So I think that's the route they're going with it. Um, it's kind of interesting that they say that they're like designed specifically for PvP as well. Even though we know that, it just I just kind of almost makes me wonder, almost worry a bit. Like if the future of the game is going to be like specifically like PvP content is going to be like strictly like all like light and dark units that like in game like you know after their like ten year run of like all the episodes at the end of the game. You know, with all the PvP content, all the content we have, is the PvP content is going to be run specifically by only light and dark units. And that kind of worries me a little bit. Uh, but who knows? With the uh, balancing that it can do and the team comps that we're going to be able to explore, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some room for some elemental heroes as well. And not the Yu Gi Oh ones. <laughs> Alright, so let's get into this. Um, new hero, Lilibet. The new hero Lilibet is released as a warrior with an ability called Extinction. Extinction is a powerful new skill that discovers the target heroes from being able to revive both passively and actively. Currently heroes that can employ resurrection effects are heavily used in arena and with the addition of the hero sets it is not easy to effectively counter these heroes. The new hero Lilibet aims to add new strategies into the arena allowing for both offensive and defensive and wider and healthy meta got you okay so this is what they were talking about guys so they were saying that they want to make heroes that counter the current meta so with a resurrection hero like a, a passive that allows you to not resurrection that's going to stop um a kd's ml kd's that's going to stop roulette it's going to stop these characters from reviving and this may also stop the revives uh, it says both passively and actively. So it's going to stop the passive ones too. So like Arbiter Vildred coming back is going to stop that and whatnot. So it's definitely just going to shake up the meta. And um, there was like some other news of another character. It's not in these notes, but it's another character that I saw that somebody was pulling from uh, some of the resources. I, I believe they got some leaked information or something. Um, that There's another hero coming. I forget who it was. I think it was Karawit. Was it Karawit? I don't remember. Um, let me know if you remember who it was, if you've seen it. But it's a unit that had an active um, passive of being able to basically negate stun and sleep, which is going to like stop, um, you know, ML Aramethas and ML uh, balls like running wild right now in Arena and PV any PvP content, really. That would just stop that. So they they're definitely trying to shake up the meta with new units and be able to counterplay. Um, now, they, it's also interesting to talk about this, just to go a little bit off topic, um, with the live PvP that they're talking about coming out. I stated this before, and I don't want them really to show the units that you're going to be playing before, because if that if that's the case, because if this game going in a counter type meta, then you're never going to get inside of a match if you can see who your character, I mean, if your uh, opponent is picking. You know, if they say like, Oh, okay, I'm gonna pick this character, and then you're gonna be like, oh, they're picking that character, and I'm gonna pick this character, and I'm like, oh, then you're picking that character, and I'm picking this character, and it's just back and forth, and y'all never gonna get inside the match. So I think you should just get inside the match, and then you know you should have your be your best team, the team you think counters the most like meta characters or whatever characters you think your opponent will be playing, and then when you get inside the match, then you see what team they got, and then you you know you come up with your strategy with your units there. So I think that's the best way to go about it, and it makes for more interesting stuff. 
Um, so they also got some actual rebalances for some characters here. Um, Alberto Vig Vildred. Revival is a key opponent for Alber uh, Alberto Vildred. Um, however, after Revival, some players found it difficult to deal damage and continue to survive. Various improvements have been made to increase the effectiveness of Alberto Vildred. Please see the balance changes for Alberto Arbiter Vildred below. Um, so basically, yeah, it's right here. It says damage dealt will no longer be affected by health loss. Instead, the base of the value damage will be decreased by 30%. Um, hmm. The base value of damage will be decreased by 30%? Does that mean, did they mean to say increase? Because this one says increase. It's the same thing. It says damage dealt will be no longer be affected by health loss. Instead, the base value will be increased by 30%. I think they meant to say increase. I think that might be a error. Mistake, uh, let me know if I'm wrong on that though. Um, but this is nice. So the passive that he has, instead of being a 10 turn cooldown, it's actually a 5 turn cooldown. So it's a little bit more reliant. Like, you know, if he survives 5 turns, he could come back again. So it's like, you got 5 turns to kill this man. Which is still a long time, you know. But if they got a nice stall team, and the team like comp is working right, Five turns is a lot easier to manage than ten turns for sure. That's half the time cut, so that's very good for him. Um, overall, this is a very good buffer villager. I know a lot of um, players been wanting a buffer Alberta villager because they want to use him. They got him, and he's overall thought he was a little bit weaker than some of the other uh, five stars uh, ML characters. So this is very good for him. Um, some of his stuff right says self world direction, combat readiness, and attack improvements. Uh, when the improved Arbiter Vildred resurrects through his passive Dark Contract. He grants himself 100% combat readiness and increased attack. In most situations, immediate action is possible at the resurrection. An increased attack, powerful attack can be made with the skill Dark Blade. Nice. So basically, he comes back. He's going to have increased attack. He's going to do more damage. And he has increased chance to 100% de uh, decrease hit chance. So he's going to come back, he's going to be stronger, and he's going to freaking hit you with a decreased hit chance right off the bat. That's crazy. That's good. Um, an improvement um, to Arbiter Villager passive skill, Dark Contra, allows him to attack right after self-revival due to his combat readiness gauge being increased to 100%. Okay, yeah, this is basically the same thing. Um, to summarize, Arbiter Villager not only offers powerful resurrection abilities, but also an increase in attack power. In addition, the reduction of Dark Contract cooldown to 5 turns allow the improved Arbiter to show true power. This is very good for him. This is very good. One of the units, they got two units actually in here that I really like, but I always felt were a little underwhelming, and I'm very excited to see these characters get more buffs. So, so let's go and take a look at Ravi's first off. Ravi is a tanker dealer with the ability to absorb damage as health. There are advantages and disadvantages when using skill Devil Drive. Utilizing every skill may not always go over smoothly. We plan to rebalance Ravi so much more favorable situations. So basically the amount of fighting spirit has been increased from 10 to 30. That is crazy. I haven't played the game when she was first released or when the game was first started. But... Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's how much she was getting before, was it? Because I know they nerfed it once, but now they're buffing it again. So this is crazy. So she's going to have more access to her S3 a lot more, which is a lot more stun. And now they're changing the devil drive. Um, before, damage dealt increased proportional to the fighting spirit. And now damage dealt is proportional to the attacks and damage taking. So that is good. So it's not even... Uh, about the fighting spirits the fighting spirit is how much uh is basically like when you can do it now it's not even the damage though isn't proportional to that no more so you can just do it now so overall she just has more damage um let's see let's keep going the conditions for attack increase has been adjusted we have made improvements to the initialization of the attack when the skill drive is used the rebalance ravi is independent of the fighting spirit and every attack increases the effect persists when she attacks or when she takes damage that is so sick oh my goodness so she's just going to be getting stronger the more she does the more damage she does and the more damage she takes she's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. uh the amount of fighting spirit after using the skill slider has increased for the skill skill slider we have significantly increased the amount of fighting spirit uh, granted 10 to 30 this changes the means that ravi will be able to use the skill drive the skill devil drive more frequently 
which will allow her to stun enemies more often and utilize her lifestyle effect. Yep. To summarize, Rabi is different from other typical warriors because she can attack and attack at the same time. We have improved the hero to improve usability of the skill Double Drive, which gives enemies powerful debuffs, which intend her they tend to have a hello to the enemies and bring about stability to the team. Now, one thing they they didn't say, they said um the damage of it is isn't proportional to the fighting spirit anymore for uh modified spirit. okay so for devil drive okay cool so devil drivers are s1 right if that's her s1 and that's really good because the problem was you didn't want to use the s3 because you were you wanted to keep the uh the fighting spirit right but if it's no longer proportional to the fighting spirit and it's proportional to the damage dealt and how much she takes then you can always just use S3, and she's going to be getting her S3 even more faster. That's really good for this unit. This unit can be very good. AoE stun now? Oh, AoE stun that's usable, and it doesn't lower your overall damage? That is very good. This unit can be very scary now, and I'm very happy. I, I want to build this unit again. I'm very happy about that. All right, now, Cigarette, another unit I really like. Probably, like, my most favorite unit in the game right now. Well, one of my favorite. One of my favorites. Um, previously, Cigarette has been seen as a damage dealer, dealer who could attack consecutively. However, relative to other heroes, she is not prominent and as she once was. In order to make Cigarette more viable as a damage dealer, we have made the following improvements. Well, uh, let's see. The chance of inflicting two bleeds effects is increased from 35% to 50%. So, they increase in her chances. And the chance of inflicting bleed increases from 85 to 100%. So basically, um, and I guess this is going to be like molar improvements for her because these are like chances which you can improve in her molar system. So basically, she's going to be able to get a 50% chance for two bleeds and a 100% chance basically to inflict one bleed. So she's guaranteed at least one bleed. Um, and then, of course, the penetrate defense, guillotine and penetrates defense by 30%. I, is it? Is it what is it now? Is this a change? It, it don't seem like this changed. It doesn't say it changed penetrate defense by this much to this much. So I don't know if that's a change actually. Um in addition to the heroes mentioned, Judge Kisei, Maid Chloe, Violet, Blood Lay Karen, Assassin Sid, Corvus, Cartridge, Fergus, and Lots. We look forward to hearing in our hairs. In regards to these heroes that have been selected. So these are the heroes that we can expect changes for. Whew. Okay. So if they're buffing Corvus, that's kind of scary. Because he's pretty good in the meta right now. Uh, Judge Kise is very good. May Chloe is very is pretty good in some situations. Blood Blade Karen definitely needs a buff. Assassin Sid definitely needs a buff. They're talking about regular cartridge here. So okay. And Purgus and Lots. I can see him needing a buff. Violet. I'm kind of scared he's... I, I feel like Violet's good, so he could go either way. Are they buffing him? Are they nerfing him? I think he's pretty good, though. So, we're going to see. We're going to see on that one. Um, other improvements, guys. Oh, right here. I forgot this. Please note that the changes are not final, and they may differ when the actual balance update occurs in the future. Epic 7 would like to be able to balance heroes and artifacts at approximately 68 weeks intervals to encourage unique metas with a variety of heroes. So, you hear this. So, they are hearing our... Like once for immediate change. Um, now what they're trying to do is they are trying to make balance changes to heroes and artifacts in a six to eight week interval to change the meta up. So every basically like two months we can expect a balance change to shake what is happening inside the game, and that's very good. It keeps the game fresh. It keeps more heroes. You know you, you see a different change of heroes, a different change of pace. It's very good for a game like this. So it's just overall just a good thing. For a game's lifespan, especially a game that they're planning to make content for for 10 years. Stuff like this is very good. And we get into the end around here. Let's continue. Moonlight Summon Improvement. The amount of materials required in order for players to receive Moonlight Summons is high. Additionally, the difference between the expected results and the actual results is also large. Therefore, we have been discussing the need to implement certain safety measures. 
That's very interesting. They have they didn't they don't go into detail this, about this. It says, however, we need to take caution as we approach the issue because the summon system would change the value of how many heroes and materials is in the game. We heard a lot about opinions about the issue and developers and publishers regard it as an important issue. So basically, what is happening here? Like they want they hear us, they hear us the cries about not getting you know players playing for since the beginning, not having a five star ML. And stuff like that like they hear it so they're thinking about a like safety measure i wonder if it's going to be like almost like a pity system like in it like after a certain amount of mls you're guaranteed at least something like a four or five or something like that um i think that'll be the best bet i don't think they should go too crazy i mean you know it is a gacha game at the end of the day they they are, they are supposed to be rare they are supposed to be hard to get um but i guess something to like make players feel like they are progressing or they are getting something is better you know because you lose your you will lose player base i guess if you've been playing a game for five to six months and you know you're not getting characters but you're all your friends are it just makes you feel bad and eventually you just you know it makes you feel like you want to stop playing so implementing some system to where like if you aren't getting something you like at least get something later may work who knows but uh de definitely looking forward to seeing exactly what they implement there and how they go about it all right gameplay convention improvements next we'll take a look at the gameplay experience these details are the same as what we discussed during the epic 7 fiesta question and answer session yeah so these are the basically same things uh that they were talking about before um so 10 consecutive summons we went over this before guys um definitely think this should be in the game uh it is in the selective summons i don't know why it's not in the game as i expressed before they said like they didn't want to encourage extra spending but you know it is a gotcha game so i don't know why they would like take that route but it just once again just makes the process so much slower like you know not everybody wants to like do 120 if you're going to get 121 no no but like a lot of people don't want to sit there and do 121 summons that takes a lot of time um you know maybe some content creators want to like you know drag it out and like you know have fun with it uh, so the options are still be there to do single summons, but for people who just want to get out of the way, I'd rather be, you know, disappointed 12 times than 121 times to my pity summon, you know, you understand? So it just, it should just be an option that's there for people that want it, you know, you shouldn't limit the, like, options people have. It, most gacha games have it, so why not? Um, repeat auto, I mean, repeat battle and auto open treasures. We are currently repairing a pet system, which improved gameplay during battle. We will not just think about adding pets that will only have a single function but we would like them to acquire pets that they will have to nurture strengthen pets will help them on their adventures and orbits due to all the factors it seems that the development of this feature is getting delayed however we plan to add this feature during the third quarter at the earliest or sometime within the year at the latest okay so basically what they're saying is it is coming out this year they're trying to confirm like it's been delayed so i guess it was like supposed to come out like at the beginning of episode two or something like that but they are delaying it so we could think about it coming out third quarter which around the fall or sometime in the winter they said at least the winter at least by the end of the year we're going to have the pet system and it's not just going to be something that's going to open chest they want you to actually like it wanted to actually be a pet it seemed like like we're going to i guess feed it we're going to like you know make it stronger stuff like that so it's an actual cool system i can't wait to see how they implement it and it's overall just more stuff to do inside the game you know you can, can't complain about that uh just can't wait to see how that works you know it's a lot of things that are in the game that aren't really implemented yet that we can see like the uh summoning system you know they got like a level beside like one to level 99 you can't upgrade the summonings yet like, that's gonna be crazy when they up uh do stuff like that can't wait to see how that works but yeah overall can't wait for that to be implemented definitely looks cool and last thing the biggest thing one of the biggest things i've been talking about uh is the promotion system and how dragged out it is so let's go and get into this we the development team think that the process when promoting a hero is quite complicated yes it is and it is vital to improve the process the following are the steps that are taken when promoting a hero select a hero to remote the hero list tap the promote button select the heroes to be used in promotion material tap on the promote button a long effect animation is played. A pop up display and the enhanced stats is displayed. Exit the promotion window. Select another hero to promote. It is so tedious, guys. I've been saying this from the beginning. From the beginning. Like, when you're trying to do your six stars, you know, you got to do. You got to max out all your two. When you max out all your two star fodders, you got to select the two star fodders. 
all the way, get them in three stars. You got to select all your three stars and, you know, put all the three stars inside of it. It just takes so long. Like, I just wish for, like, there to be, how can I say this? I want there to be a system where I could just, like, mass, like, promote, like a mass promote system. Like, I can put, like, 20 max 12, two stars in there and then select all the fodder needed to like max those out if i have them inside my inventory and just promote them all at once like just completely like that would be much faster like they can make the menu look like the um the transmission menu or something like that but you know just take i want to take my max fodder and then like just like all the fodder i need like all right you need 20 two star fodders to like max these like max two other two stars i'm like all right bam 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 bam, bam done all right promote promote it all at once like just something to make the process faster i think would just speed up the process of making six stars much like much quicker um we are going to make improvements that will ease the process at least for phantasmas that's good at least for that we plan to make these improvements in july at the earliest so that's very good they are going to do something about it i can't wait to actually see exactly what they're going to implement and how they're going to take the approach for it um, inventory expansion, yes. This is also uh, another big thing I was talking about. And last thing, um, there are many details that involve in order to make adjustments to the hero window and expand the inventory. As a result, it is not possible to make changes to it immediately. However, we understand the frustration that players may face because of their lack of space in their inventory. We have worked on it and are still working on it. Of course, the changes they have are the storage feature, and they are doing this update where the charms are excluded from the equipment uh, area that's going to be in a different space. Um, so with this, they have expressed that it is hard to like, I don't know why it's hard in the development side to up the storage space for like characters or equipment, but you know, as I've been expressing, as more units come out, you know, more three stars, more two stars and all that is, as we get more units that we want to collect and like save, the harder it is for us to like keep the amount of space that we need to like make the six stars that we want. You know, you're going to have a lot of fodder in there uh, that takes up a lot of space. And, you know to promote your heroes and stuff like that um so overall making this process faster and just giving us like more storage or some type of way they can just make the storage feature like another game that i played grand blue fantasy they have a storage system you pay for it with like some of your currency but if you run out of inventory space you can literally put extra stuff equipment and heroes inside of the storage space and then take them out whenever if the storage space work like that it would be much better like right now you can only put in it only automatically puts in from summons you can't actually put stuff inside the storage space yourself if we could do that then it would be much better and a lot more easier to manage um but that's yeah that's definitely a problem that i'm glad they are addressing and overall they are addressing a lot of stuff in these notes you know they hear us and they are trying to work with the problems that we're having and that's one thing i like about um smilegate and uh and super creative as a company you know as a collab together um they listen to the community they hear the community and they like you know they try to take everything that we have said into consideration and make the best improvements not only for themselves but for the game to last for a long time and to keep it fresh for the players um overall and a enjoyable experience but anyway that's all i got for these notes sorry it's such a long video but it's so much to cover they're doing us so much for us from episode two to these dev notes to the q a session there's a lot going on guys and i'm just trying to deliver all the news so you know everything that's going on anyway you liked anything i had to say drop me a like i greatly appreciate it and if you want to see more from me follow me on socials as always my name is dyke and dan and i'll see y'all next time signing out